A new artificial intelligence platform is being touted as key for patients whose lymphomas have relapsed. It's called the Quadratic Phenotype Optimization Platform, otherwise known as QPOP. Well, small tumor samples are collected from patients and incubated in a lab with 12 selected drugs used for lymphoma. After 72 hours, QPOP ranks the potential response of the cancer cells to over 750 distinct drug combinations, using up to four of these 12 possible drugs. And for more, we're joined in the studio by Dr. Anand Jayasekharan. He's from the National University Cancer Institute, Singapore. Uh, welcome, Dr. Anand. It is good to see you. So tell us more about uh, QPOP and the selection of drugs that was used and, and why, why it was necessary at all to develop this platform. Yeah, thank you for having us here. Um, so in, in cancer medicine, when we treat patients with combinations, we usually tell them that there's a X percentage chance of a response. So example, a 60% chance that this combination may work. But there are those patients for whom it doesn't work. And then we wonder, is there some other combination that hasn't been tested that could be uniquely effective for this particular person's cancer? Because each cancer is so different. And so, but... Testing that in clinical studies takes a very long time because you have to treat each combination with many, many patients. So we wanted a way to try to uh, streamline that process and try to get the patient's own sample that could be tested then with many different combinations. But the challenge with that is that you typically need a huge amount of tissue to be able to do such a study. Mm. Uh, and that's where we uh, were fortunate in having a good collaboration with, our, uh, with a colleague, Edward Chow, at the National University of Singapore. Uh, and he had developed a method called QPOP, which was able to come to these answers from a relatively small amount of tissue. So we were motivated to try to test that out in, in uh, cancer samples and patients. And that's where the study started. All right. Uh when we talk about the accuracy of what QPOP was able to do, again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, was your sample size about 71 patients? All right, so 71, 65 had a successful QPOP test. Of that, 17 achieved a complete response to treatment recommended by QPOP. So statistically, that counts as a successful, <laughs> I mean, that, that QPOP yeah. does its job better than, say, human clinicians alone. So... Um, Firstly, this study was an, a proof of implementation. It was to say, can we even try applying something like uh, this in normal clinical practice? So the challenge was, how do we take the samples to the lab, get it tested in such a format? And so the 65 out of 70-odd uh, patients that successfully had QPOP was just to show that it was possible to do this. Uh, now, in this type of early phase study, not every patient would go on to receive the treatment recommended for a variety of reasons. Maybe those drugs were not available in Singapore. Maybe they've never been tested in humans in that combination before. So only a small fraction of them could actually receive the treatment uh, based on a variety of other factors. And now, typically in such patients who have heavily relapsed lymphoma, the response rates to standard treatment is very, very low. It's in the order of about 10%. So when you start seeing a response of um, almost out of the 17 patients who we had treated, almost half of them had a very good response. So to five treatment. was positive, five, three was... Five were complete responses, yeah. which means that the cancer was gone three completely. Was mm. And three, three were partial, partial responses. So that's eight out, of, out 17. of 17. And that for us was quite encouraging to tell us that in this typical disease group where pretty much nothing works normally, that we were seeing very effective responses to combinations that we would never normally think of to use. Uh, it's not, you know, out of uh, a lack of clinical knowledge, it's just that nobody's ever tested these things right. before. Yeah, because there are a spectrum of treatments when it comes exactly. to uh, lymphoma. Uh, would it be useful for QPOP to be used at the diagnostic stage? I mean, you're, you're testing on relapsed patients, uh, but what about from right at the beginning of illness? Uh, and this would be the ultimate dream, but uh, in, in most cancer medicine, we know that there are certain treatments that have already been shown to be effective in a large fraction of patients. And so it would be unethical to deny them those treatments in the first go, because if you had a six out of 10 chances of being cured of your lymphoma, you would want to try that first. Uh, so this uh, protocol is really in that setting where uh, we run out of standard options. 
when patients no longer have any standard options but are still relatively fit. This is a common situation that we encounter uh, in, in our clinical practice. Uh, and most clinicians and patients are often left wondering, what do we do now? Uh, mm. And that's where we, we, this is the entry point. But like you say, perhaps in the future, this might be, you know, as we develop this further, we may come to a point where it can be brought forward. So it doesn't remove the possibility of remission, but it gives these patients hope, essentially. It, it gives, might. Yeah, it mm -hmm. gives them a chance of maybe trying a new combination that would not have been thought of right. as a routine for this particular type of disease. Mm -hmm. right, since we we're talking about moving this into the future, now this is one, you could say it's just one application of using from your point of view. So AI and an automated mm -hmm. workflow allows you to use a very small amount of tissue to check all the possibilities of what to do with that tissue. Absolutely. So this kind of template, in principle, you can apply that to many, many other uh, question marks you might have right now in medical research. Uh, absolutely. And I think, you know, this whole concept of functional precision medicine. There's in fact a society for this worldwide where we're trying to see what we can do to dive deep into that particular individual's disease, in this case cancer, uh, and try and see how we can leverage on technology, you know, nan nanomedicine, tech, uh, ability to use robotics in our workflows, ability to incorporate AI into this. So there's been a lot of advances in this area and we feel that uh, we're just starting out in this journey. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Anand, for coming into the studios to uh, share more on this uh, with us. And, and congratulations as well uh, for your team uh, and thank the you. development of this. Thank Dr. you for having us here. Dr. Anand Jaya Shekharan there from the National University Cancer Institute, Singapore.